Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today we've got a new helmet tutorial video for you. And that will be Season 2 Hunter. Yes, I hope you all have been enjoying the Bad Batch Season 2 as much as we have and wanted to make a Season 2 version of Hunter's Helmet. So Hunter would be the one that has had the most changes from Season 1 into Season 2 and uh, he's become a lot more interesting in his color scheme. Right. But we're starting with one of our raw casts here. We do offer these casts in the shop. They are pre-smoothed, which means that we get to skip most of these sanding and smoothing phases. And after we've got this visor cut out, pretty much head straight to painting. But how are we going to cut this visor out? So first off, we like to make sure that we have guidelines by putting little dots around the visor rim and then around the neck seal. That will just help us guide our uh, Dremel to where it needs to go, just so we're not being too messy when working with this precious cast. We're going to be using a uh, Dremel drilling bit to actually kind of drill out those holes that we marked, right? It's just so we can use that Dremel cutting edge to go between these lines and to make sure that we're moving in the right direction and it also helps cut smoothly so there's no jagged edges. Right. You kind of just want to connect the dots to those holes. It helps make the cutting wheel a lot easier to use. And uh, you definitely don't want to have like a stray run or, of the cutting wheel and accidentally cut something that you don't want to. And those dots and those uh, holes really help keep things in line. And so when you're done cutting that all out, it should just fall out. And then you can refine any edges with a with sandpaper or a file. Mm-hmm. So similarly to cutting out the visor, we're going to trim out the neck seal a little bit. There's a little bit of flashing that just needs to be trimmed out so you can actually get your head inside. Yeah, and speaking of flashing, just around some of the highest points, there will also be a tiny amount of flashing, which should clear up just using some 120 grit sandpaper to clear it out. And then we'll have a perfect cast already good to go for painting. Yeah, so let's jump right into painting. We got a... Uh base coat paint here, what are we going to be using? So I like to use an airbrush whenever possible, so that'll just give me a bit more control of the tone. So I like to use a German Grey by uh, Vallejo. Uh, this gives me the right sort of tone that I'm looking for, but if you don't have an airbrush, you can use any rattle can that is a significantly darker grey. A deep, dark grey. And that's going to work as basically the base for the whole helmet. Yeah, so I'll coat the entire thing, including the Greeblies, all in this color. So before we start laying on some of the other colors of the helmet, we want to be putting down some of the liquid latex. That's gonna help mask off some of the weathering and uh, some of the details around the helmet. So that's the thing about Hunter in season two. We can tell that he's been through a lot in this time. So his helmet and all of the Bad Batch's helmets are a lot more weathered than they used to be. And a lot of that gray base coat and even a white is showing through these areas. We want to make sure to show that by using a liquid latex on some of the areas that will that will later be that orangey red that his uh, helmet has become. Mm -hmm. Some of those areas around the call it the nose and the mouth area. Any other areas around the helmet that you touched up? So it would be the forehead band as well and once the liquid latex is on it that will dry down and that will stay there until we're ready to peel it off later once we have the next coat on. But first, we wanted to get the next color in order, which is a flat black band that is on the top of, well, for lack of a better word, his mohawk. Yeah, so you got the that area taped off and just applying a light coat, I assume. And Yeah, uh, just a flat coat that will provide a nice base for what will come next, which is we're going to be ready for the orangey red that his, yeah, uh, his, his, his helmet's become. His new, uh, new color scheme. I, I don't know if I'm a fan of the, the change. I liked the red quite a bit, but I do think it helps signify their kind of growth and kind of change from their original Clone Wars yeah. outfit. Yeah. And it shows that they're, you know, they're a guerrilla force now, they're mercenaries. They don't have the resources to keep their armor painted in the cool style that they or like. Or even all the parts of their armor, apparently. They, they lose quite a bit of it. Yeah, so that's what we want to highlight with this helmet, that this is not the same Hunter from Season 1. This is a much more weathered, much more discolored helmet than before. So that's why we're going to... Uh, get these colors all down nice and flat and then we're going to start layering on an orange but orange is quite a translucent color so we want to make sure that we have a nice bright base to begin with now what we're going to use is a flat primer white 
which will provide a nice color gradient for when we put on the next base. Right. As I'm starting to learn, the base color underneath can make a huge impact. You can do as many coats as you want of the new color, but depending on what that base color is, it can either really darken or really brighten the colors on top. And that's exactly right. You need to think of these things before you start jumping to your next painting layer. That's why I waited for this white to dry, and then it's ready for airbrushing. All right, so what kind of paints have we got in the airbrush? So we start off with um, going back to our Archive X, which is our current new favorite type of um, acrylic airbrush paint. Mm -hmm. uh, their SP Scarlet uh, will provide a nice, like, ruddy red-orange, and uh, we'll use that as the base. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of a darker orange. Yeah, because you can see when you get some nice close-ups of uh, Hunter's helmet when he's not sprinting around, you can see that there is a darker tone uh, behind a lot of the scratches. That will provide a nice base to then gradually come up in tone, mixing in um, a more orangey color, which is called reefer orange. And it's those two mixtures of the color that I feel like gives it a lot of life and uh, really makes the orange red pop. Yeah, and so you just want to use that mix more and more orangey when it gets to the higher spots. That's where light will bounce off, so it makes sense that it'll get more orangey there. And then, once that's done, we get to start peeling everything off, yes, including we, the masking. We do love our peeling uh, sessions and peeling uh, videos. And so you see here, as we start to remove the latex, everything will start to uh, look more worn, chipped, and mm -hmm. it's starting to already get closer to what we recognize as Hunter. And the edges get a lot more rugged, too, and... Uh... Very few clean, straight lines on Hunter. So one clear difference between Season 1 and Season 2 of Hunter is that there is a grey band that is now on the top of his dome, either side of the Mohawk. This provides a good base for where the skull will be later, but it also provides more weathering opportunity. So what we do is, using the same uh, paint scheme that we use for Imperial Cody, is we use this light and uh, dark reefer gray by Archive X. Mm -hmm. It creates a nice imperial style, you know, uh, remnant effect that will allow the helmet to look much more weathered later when we start to get more grays, blacks, and uh, chipping on it. They really lay over each other very well. I gotta say, they blend in very nice. And the, the differences in color really helps make the helmet pop. So now that we got the gray bands across the sides of the helmet, we get to work on Hunter's iconic skull pattern on uh, his left side of his face. Yeah, so it's quite a distinct design and I wanna make sure that I'm getting it right. So I've been using a technique where I apply some masking tape first just to a wide area and will then draw it out until it's looking pretty close to what, you know, uh, what, the what reference we, yeah, looks like. exactly, what we recognize as, as Hunter's skull. I will then take that to a cutting board, I'll remove that tape, and we'll cut out a little template. And then you just work around that template, leaving that tape on, that area underneath that tape will remain that dark gray. Exactly, and it gives you a good idea if, it, it, if it's looking right, and so you, it gives you a chance to refine it because you'll get a vague imprint of what the final result will look like. So then you mask up that area, mask up the top of the band on his left side of his helmet, and it's ready to start adding the yes. iconic skull. Now we need to paint on the actual skull. What color are you starting with? So I made sure to use a light reefer gray as a very dark base or a comparatively dark base, and then start gradually adding in more white. Uh, this will allow it to get you know, brighter in the high spots, in the spots that haven't been scuffed as much. And then I like to gradient that by going the other direction and using darker tones, some of that uh, German gray base and getting parts that are a lot more scuffed. And once we're satisfied with the general shape of that, we get to do one of the best peeling sections. Yeah, we love for a long peeling time. it off. That helmet looks really crisp and clean, which... Uh... Might not be something that we are looking for for the finished product, but right now it it just looks so good. Yeah, but we all know that that is not how Hunter looks that in season two. So how are we going to weather this thing down a little bit? So as we know, most of the details of what makes Hunter Hunter is just how scratched up and banged up his helmet is. So we're going to use pretty similar processes. We're going to use sandpaper on those edges to rough up the shape. We're going to add scratches to the white. 
we're going to dry brush on multiple different colors of white and gray, which will just add some textural interest to the surface, make it more animated style, a mm -hmm. little bit more painted, um, but it's still looking a little bit too clean for my liking. I was going to say, a lot of the animated helmets kind of have these uh, scratched features in all sorts of different helmets, but Hunters and like Imperial Crosshairs, I know, are some of the like most, how do I want to say it, scratched? Yeah, scuffed. Like, scuffed. You can definitely see like paint lines in it in every which direction. So we want to emulate that a little with some dry brushing and especially around the edges. I'm just going to get what a Citadel tank brush, which is just used for big surfaces and it's quite hard bristles. So I'm going to work some of that German gray into that, uh, into that brush. And we'll just start dabbing that into the very corners. You're gonna get some paint streaks. You're gonna get a little bit of just some distortion in the color, just areas that, you know, has been scratched on a surface. And it's just gradually gonna look a lot more like we recognize him in the show. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing here? We got a little uh, chunk of sponge off and you're using it to kind of dab on white paint onto some of the corners. Yeah, so we see in a lot of the reference photos with Hunter on some of the most scratched parts, it actually seems to be right down to the base colors that the helmet is made from. So in this case, a bright, bright white. So we like to add, as you said, a bit of sponge and we just want to dry brush and dab really randomly onto all those edges. And then once we have a general shape of, of how it looks, we're going to get a bit of white on a brush and we're gonna just join up those pieces and start to get the highest points of every armor panel and hit them with a little bit of white as well and a little bit of gray. Well, the helmet is already looking amazing, but we've got a few other spots to touch up, right? Yeah, so there are some details that um, are a little bit different uh, that help make the rest of the helmet pop. In particular right now, it's the teeth. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure that the background of the teeth is black and then the top of the teeth is sort of a primer you know, flat gray, something that you don't really see in the rest of the helmet that allows the rest of it to really, you know, shine out by comparison. And I think saving those for last is wise because those teeth really don't have any uh, markings or they're not really weathered at all. They're kind of just background details. That's you don't, exactly right. You don't want to bring them too much forward to kind of take away from... Hunter has so much stuff going on in his face. You want that to be front and center, what people notice first. And so those teeth markings kind of or those teeth kind of just uh we're just going to fill them in and so finally that allows us to do the greeblies so he has a couple uh interesting pieces very animated looking and we're just going to base them the exact same color as everything else using an airbrush which is that german gray or any sort of dark flat gray and we just need to make it as distressed and weathered as everything else so hit all those corners just with a little bit of dry brushing just make it look like it's been scuffed just like everything else and we're good to go i gotta say i love how dirty your hands are getting through this video <laughs> you can kind of just watch it progress yeah you have to test it first and you know your hands are the easily least available <laughs> they're so. always within reach <laughs> so once you have those greeblies all painted up and weathered we're going to be uh super gluing them right onto the helmet then Yep, we use some CA glue, put them in place, dry fit them first, and then once you are comfortable with it, you hit it with a little bit of activator and you are good to go. So question about that activator. You spray it right onto the piece, which I assume will get down into the glue and do its job. Have you ever had it interfere with any kind of paint? No, in fact, if you see in the video here, whilst there's a, a little bit of a drip, you can actually see me just wipe it off with my finger. It will not interact with the paint at all. Um, this stuff is fantastic with a paint job and uh, I highly, highly recommend it, especially if you're impatient like me. So once we've got all the pieces together and assembled, we want to protect this very precious paint job that you've done. How are we gonna do that? Yeah, we're just gonna use a matte clear coat um, just to make sure that it's a little bit more scratch resistant and none of that paint's gonna wipe off. And uh, if this is any other type of helmet or if you wanted something a bit more shiny, which is very unlike Hunter, you can add a gloss top coat, just whatever you want your finish to be. As long as you have this, your helmet will, will be a lot more scratch resistant. Yeah, we wanna preserve our paint job after spending all this time on it. We would hate to see it get chipped or uh, any kind of like liquid wipe away any of the paint. But I think Hunter's missing one important thing and that is his visor. Make sure that when you put this helmet on, people can't actually see you 
What are we going to use for that? So first off, we're going to use a template just made of some paper. We'll put it on the inside of the helmet and we'll trace out the inside. That will then be cut out and put on a Hobart face shield. This is a replacement visor that is about anywhere between shade three and shade five. That will allow you to see out, but them to be unable to see you. Right. Inside the helmet, it'll be nice and dark too. That helps prevent people from seeing in, but you can see out quite well through it. It's like wearing sunglasses, basically. And once that's cut out and ready, we're just gonna use some visor clips to make sure that this helmet uh, visor stays in place. So I use some hot glue and trace out some areas that will accept the visor clips. I'll uh, put on one side first, fit the lens, put on another visor clip so it's all held in place, and just reinforce it with a couple at the top. That is all you need, a little bit of hot glue and a couple 3D printed parts. And the visor is done and this helmet is looking fantastic. I gotta say, I really like how those uh, visor ridges work and being able to be held in with something like hot glue works great. Well guys, there we go. That is our season two Bad Batch Hunter helmet. Jamie did a outstanding job on this. Again, I have to really commend you. This helmet looks beautiful. Thank you, yeah. I've done season one before, but it was really interesting. As soon as you start looking at the references, you see how much changes in the design from one season to the other. It was fantastic to delve into it and just get even more weathered, even more distressed in all of those edges and play around with the color and just think how much has happened across this time and uh, what he has gone through. Yeah, I really like how they're playing with the design of the helmet itself to kind of tell the story, show how Hunter and the whole Bad Batch as a crew are changing as time goes on. And if you want to attempt this helmet yourself, remember that you can get one of these casts from Galactic Armory or uh, get the files online and 3D print it yourself to make right. it home. I got to say the casts save a lot of time. You can skip most of that sanding and smoothing phase. That'll cut out probably 10 hours of work. And the cast is basically ready to paint out of the box. To put it in perspective, I was ready to start painting this helmet in about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that is a huge time saver. Well worth the cost, in my opinion. But thank you all for watching the tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like this format. It's a bit more conversational with uh, Jamie and I. So in addition to the casted helmets, we're also going to be offering this helmet as the first finished helmet available in the store. They are going to be all handmade by Jamie here, who did this one. It'll be basically just like this, right? That's right. Everything will be matched to this helmet and they'll be made to order. So um, they'll be available in the future from now on. Right. I'm very excited to begin offering more finished helmets to you guys. That's something I've wanted to do for a long time. And these casts really help make it possible. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you again in the next one. Killer.